everyone welcome to a new video thank you all so much for being here i hope you're having a wonderful week and of course a wonderful autumn i hope you're having a cozy time doing your favorite things reading amazing books and overall just living the magic of this season this will be a bit of a catch-up vlog, I would say, because for me it has been a while since I've last spoken to a camera. I did pre-film a few videos before going, but I did go for a little vacation last week where I was visiting my family, so of course it was wonderful, but now I feel like I've missed so much and I miss talking to all of you, of course. So this will be a bit of a catch-up on all the things. I am hoping to have quite a few productive days, actually, even though jet lag is still being very mean to me. I still need to fix my sleeping schedule, which has not been going that well. I haven't slept much during these past few nights, but hopefully it will get better. I feel like it is getting better as each day goes by. So we'll get there eventually, but since I did go on vacation this week, I of course bought a few books and I thought I could share them with you, of course. I did go to the United States, which means that of course I needed to visit Barnes & Noble because it's not every day that I get to do that. <laughs> So of course a bit of damage was done. I also bought a few beautiful candles like the one you see right here. This one is called Pumpkin Glove, I believe, and I bought a few others as well. I just couldn't resist because they had such an incredible autumn collection and again, it's not every day that I get access to that. So I thought I would take the chance and I bought a few of them that you'll be able to see throughout my autumnal vlogs, of course. And this is the one that I decided to try first. It smells so nice. It has kind of a sweet scent, which I'm not usually the biggest fan of. But for some reason, this one is working for me. I love it so much and it is beautiful as well. So... I'm very excited to keep creating autumnal videos. This is such a wonderful time of the year. It is absolutely my favorite, not only autumn, but winter as well. So this few months that are coming, including October, of course, always give me such a sense of happiness. And I'm very excited to share all of that with you, of course. But with that said, why don't we start with the book haul? Because like I said, a bit of a damage was done. <laughs> In no particular order, I'm just going to show you the beautiful books that I got. This was actually the last book that I bought and it is A Witch in Time by Constance Sayers. I feel like I've already seen this book going around, maybe not on booktube, I cannot remember exactly where I saw this book, but I'm always looking to increase my witchy books collection and if you have any recommendations for me, please let me know. It is definitely one of my favorite things to explore. And this one was beautiful as well. It does have deckled edges, which gives it a very oldish vintage look, which I absolutely adore. But what intrigued me was this paragraph that said, bound to her lover in 1895 and trapped by his side ever since, Helen has lived through multiple lifetimes under different names, never escaping her tragic endings. Only this time she might finally have the power to break the cycle. So I'm guessing this will be a bit of a tragic book, I would say. I'm excited to find out and this seemed like the perfect book to read during this time, of course. I might try to fit this one in my October reading plans or if not, maybe save it for either winter or next year. But let me know if you've read this one because I, I think I've seen this one around but I'm not remembering exactly any reviews for it at the moment. So definitely let me know your thoughts if you've read this one. Next, we have what you could call a little manga segment. I was very excited when I entered Barnes & Noble. I had to resist so much because the section dedicated to manga was huge. And if I had more space in my bag and more money that I could spend, I definitely would have made more damage because they had so many books that I was looking for for so long. Um, but in the end, I decided to go with this three and I think it was a good choice if you ask me. Um, the first one I'm very intrigued by, particularly intrigued by this one because so many people have been raving about this series recently and apparently it's very short as well so it should be fairly easy to binge I'm hoping um, but that is Spy X Family or Spy versus Family. I'm not sure exactly how you would say this but 
It is written and drawn, apparently, by Tatsuya Endo, and I believe this follows kind of a quirky family where they have sort of powers, I believe. Yes, apparently there's a telepath, an assassin, and a spy. I don't think the spy is part of the family, so I think we're following kind of a found family here, which if that's the case, that's halfway through for me to love it, because found family is one of my favorite story tropes, storytelling mechanisms, so I'm not sure if that's the case with this one, but I think that's what I've heard. Um, anyway, this just sounds adorable. The art style is absolutely beautiful. I'm trying not to spoil myself, but anyway, it's stunning and the characters look so cute, so adorable, and I just love reading manga so much. I think it is a beautiful form of storytelling. I love looking at the art. I believe there's also an anime for this, which I'm definitely watching, especially if I love the series, which I have a good feeling I will. Um, if you're one of the big fans of this series, please let me know. I am really hoping I love this and then I can buy the rest of the volumes, I believe. I, I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's only like 10 volumes or something. It's a very short series from what I can tell, um, but I'm not entirely sure about the amount. The next manga that I got <laughs> has a very weird name, but people keep telling me that this is one of the most beautiful, emotional stories they've ever read. And that's pretty much enough for me to get it. It's enough for me to be intrigued. It also has a beautiful cover. Um, and it is called I Want to Eat Your Pancreas by... By who? <laughs> the story is by Yoru Sumino. And art style is by Idumi Kirihara. But this is the complete manga collection, which is perfect because I can read all of it in a row. The art style is stunning. It kind of has... A bit of a romantic look to it, it's hard to describe, but the character seems so sweet, um, but I do think this is a sad story. I'm not sure if one of the characters is maybe sick, it does say a bittersweet romance. Yeah, one of the characters is dying from a pancreatic disease and he's the only person outside this character's family who knows this um, and I'm guessing they will bond somehow and create this very cute relationship. I can tell that this book will probably break my heart. <laughs> I'm just reading the description. I'm, I'm kind of feeling it. I know what's coming probably um, and I'm already terrified to read this but I really want to. People keep saying incredible things about it and I do want to read more manga as well so maybe I will even look up a few trigger warnings for it before going into it because it does seem very intense but yes that's this one. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> And then the last manga that I got was actually the second volume of Snow White with the Red Hair. I did read the first volume a while ago, it was this year, and I thought it was cute. It wasn't one of my favorites yet, but I do think it had a solid beginning and it was good enough for me to want to continue with the series. This is basically the story about a girl who has this bright, unique red hair, and so a few people are going after her because they do have her hair all for themselves because it is supposed to have some kind of magical abilities and on the other side there are some people who of course are trying to protect her so this focuses a lot on friendship which is something that I absolutely adore and I'm hoping to get more of that in the next volumes because that's kind of what I missed in the first one as well I believe it was cute I like the idea but we still haven't spent a lot of time with each character and that's what I'm hoping this one and the next ones hopefully will give me. So that's this one. I am very excited that my little manga collection is growing. <laughs> and of course, not only did they have this massive manga collection, but they also have an entire shelf dedicated to the one and only J.R. Tolkien. And it was a pain for me to pick only one book to bring with me. Again, I needed to control myself a little bit, but I decided to go with this little cute book. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at that! It's so cute and tiny! I love it so much! <laughs> and they had pretty much all of his books, well, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them in this collection, and I, I just think it looks adorable, and now I need all of them! 
with this edition. This is The Shaping of Middle Earth and it is part of the history of Middle Earth. They did have different sections and this one was the history of Middle Earth um, and of course I needed to get it. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to read more books by him. We have some maps inside, which is amazing. Some diagrams as well, maybe telling us more about how he came up with this beautiful, beautiful world. This was also edited by Christopher Tolkien, who in this book maps out the journey his father took to create the endlessly beloved world of Middle-earth and reveals the shaping of its myths, legends and geography. That's amazing! I'm so excited to read it. Oh my gosh, it must be fascinating. This is one of those books that I want to take my time with for sure. Anyway, that's this one. Beautiful. I love it. And before I get to the beautiful classics editions, which of course I needed to buy a few, I also spotted this book and I'm still not entirely sure what it is about. I mean, I guess the title kind of says it, but I really do not want to know much more about this one. I kind of want to be surprised by the information that it has, but I saw this cover <laughs> and the title, and of course I needed to grab it. It is World of Wonders, and it says, in praise of fireflies, whale sharks, and other astonishments. So I'm guessing this will be kind of a praise of nature and how fascinating it can be taking a few of these little creatures examples. Stunning illustrations as well. I mean, if you look at the end pages only, that's so beautiful, isn't it? Oh my gosh. And throughout the book as well, here's a whale shark for you. <laughs> it looks adorable. I love it so much. And another one, this is about the dragon fruit. So yes, I'm guessing this will be kind of a scientific book on one hand, but also kind of an appreciation for all of these species as well. And all of that fascinates me a lot. I do have a few nonfiction books about nature that I really want to get to. And this sounded perfect for my collection about that as well, because it's one of my favorite topics. And I feel like it's something that I know close to nothing about, which makes me feel very, very sad. I one day would love to know more facts about animals and plants I am looking forward to going on that journey and so I've been slowly but surely collecting a few books about that um, and hopefully I will gain more knowledge about this incredibly fascinating topic. So yes, this sounded amazing for that collection and it's so beautiful, I love it so much. And now of course we get to the stunning editions of classics. I bought Four of them, I believe, and they are all editions that are exclusive to Barnes & Noble. Um, you can find them online on a few websites, I believe, but I, of course, needed to take the opportunity of actually being there <laughs> and bringing some books with me. Um, the first one is, I believe, an older edition, but I love them. <laughs> I don't see a lot of people loving these editions that I know of, but they're some of my favorites. Um, they have kind of a minimalistic look to them, but I find them so charming. And the one that I decided to pick up, even though they had a lot of them, is this beautiful edition of the Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. I'm sure I've read a lot of them that are here because I do own a couple of other collections of these fairy tales because fairy tales are some of my favorite things to read. They can be so wonderful, whimsical, magical, while at the same time being extremely dark and depressing and sometimes give you a bit of a reflection about human nature and the author himself as well, which I find absolutely fascinating and so compelling. I didn't look at the index yet to look at what fairy tales are included here, but I know it's a lot. Um, it's also divided into little sections. So we have folk tales, the artist and society, original fairy tales, evangelic and religious tales, the anthro... the anthropomor... Wow. <laughs> Anthropomorphization. That's better, maybe. <laughs> of animals and nature. Then we have the humanization of toys and objects, legends, and that's it. We also have a few commentaries and questions and a further reading section. So this is a fascinating edition. I cannot wait to read the rest of all of these fairy tales. And then, of course, I needed to buy this gorgeous edition of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I mean, 
it is one of my favorite stories of all time i do have the picture of dorian gray in the same edition as well again another one of my favorites and i think they will go perfect together side by side they will be friends and <laughs> these are so beautiful it has green sprayed edges stunning illustrations on the inside and then we have the first quote of the book on the back it's just beautiful i love the design so much so this is the spine and then the cover again i keep collecting different editions of this book because it is very special to me it was one of the first books that i read when i was falling in love with classic literature and then of course i also watched the movie actually i believe i even watched the movie first the 2005 adaptation which in my opinion is the best <laughs> nothing can top it it is the perfect movie in my eyes um so it does really have a very special place in my heart and i will cherish it forever and then i went to kind of a children's classics section and i have seen these editions before but didn't have any of them and i really could not resist i was trying to decide between one of these two but i did have some extra space so i thought you know what <laughs> just go with it and those are these stunning editions I got Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery and Heidi by Joanna Sparry. Heidi is one of my favorite stories. Again, it holds a very special place in my heart because I did used to watch an old series with my great-grandparents back at home and because of that I have very fond memories and I know the book has a lot of flaws, it's maybe not that great in the eyes of so many people, but I, I will always love it. it, it will always be a favorite for me, so this one I needed to bring for sure. I mean, I looked at it and I thought immediately it needs to come with me, so that's what I did. It also has some cute illustrations inside and I just love it so much. And then of course, Anne of Green Gables, because it is an autumnal classic and I just I needed it with me. It's so stunning as well and adorable and I love the spirit of this book so much. That's it for this vlog. I'm going to put all of these books in their place and then probably do some work and catch up on my reading.
right, I got some tea and what will hopefully be a delicious cinnamon roll. It's very good. <laughs> So let's talk about books, my current reads and also a few books that I'm planning to read next. This one I will briefly mention, but it is of course Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I am adoring this book so much and I already have my first vlog dedicated to it. I'm almost done with this first book, which is not saying much because we have a whole other volume to go after this one. But honestly, that makes me happy because I do not want the story to end. I feel so invested in it and of course my love for the musical also helps, I'm sure, but the book itself is proving to be amazing and this big emotional journey like I figured it would be but I am so happy I'm not disappointed by it that was kind of my fear before going into this one um, but so far it's been great and of course if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts you can watch that vlog and also a few upcoming vlogs that I will be filming for it um, I think I'm gonna film one more vlog for this book in particular and then maybe two other vlogs for the next volume we'll see but but anyway, I am loving it and it was also wonderful to see your comments on that video because I realized that a lot of you love this classic as well or are planning to read it sometime in the future and so far I can say I highly recommend it. It is of course very dense but the characters here make it all worth it. Victor Hugo's writing is also stunning and the messages, of course, are still relevant to this day and that's always incredible. So that's Les Mis. I am looking forward to keep reading this one, of course, and making a lot more annotations. I just love the look of annotated books. They are so pretty. The next one I started reading a couple of weeks ago, I would say, this is called How Do You Live by Genzaburo Yoshino. I don't have the dust jacket currently because I always take it off when I read hardbacks, but it is stunning, isn't it? Um, and I decided to read this book because supposedly it is the inspiration for the next Studio Ghibli movie and apparently it was one of Miyazaki's favorite childhood books. That's all I needed to hear, really. <laughs> and so far, I can clearly see how this book would be an inspiration for one of his movies. It clearly has that nostalgic tone to it and fantastical as well. I'm not very far into it at all, but this follows a boy that seems to feel a little bit out of place among his friends and he starts connecting with his uncle um, because he starts asking him a lot of big questions such as what does it mean to live, to love, to go through some other tough moments in life, what it means to grieve something or someone. So these are all big questions, of course, about life that don't necessarily have an answer, but his conversations with his uncle are so sweet because he clearly tries his best to give him a fresh perspective while not patronizing him, I guess, um, which is very important. I like how this book respects children in a way, which is maybe a weird thing to say, but I feel like sometimes stories can be very unfair for children in a sense that we treat them as if they're not smart, as if they can't pick up on things, and that's not true at all. As someone who works with children, I can see that they are incredibly smart and they do have a lot of important questions. They are curious about them and that's a wonderful thing. Um, so I love how this book doesn't shy away from showing us that. Of course, maybe, and I'm hoping it doesn't do that, I'm hoping it doesn't make this child feel much older than he actually is. So I feel like there's a really thin line <laughs> between these two extremes. Um, but so far, I think the book has a good balance when it comes to that, and I'm really liking it. Although, of course, a few messages so far seem to be a bit too on the nose for me, but also probably that's because I am a little older and this book is more intended for a younger audience. But so far, I'm loving it so much. I think it's very sweet and once again I can perfectly see how this would be an inspiration. It has the exact right tone for that wonderful, wonderful studio that makes some of my favorite movies of all time. So if this ever turns into a movie, I will be the first in line to watch it. <laughs> 
Another one that I also started very, very recently was The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy because this is the group book for Victober, which is a wonderful read-along throughout the month of October in which everyone is reading Victorian novels. So of course I wanted to join somehow. I'm not sure I will be able to fulfill all the prompts, but this one at least I wanted to join in. There's not much that I can say so far because I'm still kind of in the middle of chapter one, so it's really not far into it at all. But so far we have this couple, they are wandering around, they are heading somewhere. I'm not sure exactly to do what or where they're heading, but it seems to be to do something they don't exactly want to do necessarily. Um, it just has that weird tone to it. What I can say is that I absolutely adore Hardy's descriptions of the characters. It always feels very melancholic, I would say. I had the same feeling when I read Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Um, the descriptions were just beautiful and I love how he also treated nature as if a mirror to our souls, which is a metaphor that I always find fascinating and I feel like he's kind of doing the same here, although I've heard from other people that this is a much more plot-focused book instead of a character-driven novel, which is usually not my preference, but I still trust Thomas Hardy and I think I will end up enjoying this one as well. I've only read Tess of the Dead Reveals by him, but I do own quite a collection <laughs> of his books and I do want to get to all of them, of course. So if you have any recommendations as to what book I should read after this one, I would like to try and read Judy Obscure kind of soon-ish. I think I mentioned that in my possibilities for my October reading plans, which is still a possibility. <laughs> Maybe not in October necessarily, but just during this colder time of the year. I'm hoping to maybe try and read that one, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> For now I'm gonna focus on this one and also take some annotations. Thomas Hardy is one of those authors that I always want to annotate a few quotes from because his writing is beautiful. The introduction also mentions how he always wanted to be a poet, but he did have to write novels to earn some money and it's very interesting to see how his poetry, his poet spirit still shines in his novels. You could perfectly tell that that was kind of his calling or his passion. That's very clear in his words and that's just beautiful to see. And then finally, the last book that I'm currently reading is one that I'm loving. <laughs> I'm loving this book so much, I don't know what it is. I mean, I know, I kind of do but I wasn't expecting to love it so much. Um, anyway, that's Possession by A.S. Byatt, which is our current pick for the Hobbitses book club. We actually have a date for the live show already. I believe it will be on Friday, October 21st, is it? Um, I already have the link for it, so I will leave it in the description in case you'd like to set a reminder and join us, but oh my! <laughs> Apparently this is considered to be a hidden gem in the dark academia genre and I can perfectly see why. I think ugh, the way it describes this very strong passion for books, stories and hidden treasures is so compelling to me and I, I relate to it so much, um, even though it also questions whether that's a moral thing to do or not, because this follows... Well, I thought it was only one protagonist, but I guess we have two protagonists, kind of, and um, they are doing some research on two Victorian authors, and among all that research, they end up finding maybe some secret correspondence between both of those authors that seems to be a bit private, it was never really out for the public to see and maybe they start finding out some more details about their lives um, and it's just fascinating. From the first paragraph this book is so atmospheric and it describes this love of just holding a book, smelling it, cherishing it and discover all of the hidden secrets that it has for us and I think that's something that all of us can relate to even if just a little bit, isn't it? But I love when books focus on that, on this, you could call it a passion or maybe an obsession. We could have that discussion as well, which I think would be interesting for the live show actually. But this just inner necessity, let's call it that, of finding out more about these people who are not here anymore and who maybe had this entire life that was never known to anyone 
and the only thing that can help you discover if that was true or not is their own words written in hidden letters and I, I think that's something there's something very magical and romantic about it of course we can question again if that's a moral thing to do or not because it is after all a private affair for those people um, even though they're not here anymore shouldn't they have the right to keep it secret who knows so yes i think it has that dark academia tone that i have been looking for for so long because it is a genre that in theory i absolutely adore i love everything it represents i love the aesthetic i love a lot of movies that fall into that genre but the books have been disappointing me a little bit at least the ones that people usually consider dark academia have not been for me but this one might be the winner. Now, fair enough, I haven't read The Secret History yet, which I know is known to be THE Dark Academia book, um, but fear not, I am reading that book for a different video in the future eventually. <laughs> but while I don't, I think this one will fill this void that I have been feeling <laughs> for a long time now. And I'm so happy I'm loving it. I know Sarah considers it a favorite now, which is amazing. Lucy enjoyed it as well and Melina did too, maybe not so much, but I'm just happy that everyone or at least a lot of people seem to be enjoying it and it can be a bit slow sometimes. I will agree that a few parts are maybe not that relevant for the story, but everything seems to be like pieces of this puzzle that you're trying to uncover and even if eventually you don't find the right answers for it, it's like you don't need it because it's the journey, it's the process of finding out and researching that is so fascinating. So I'm really, really liking it and I'm looking forward for our discussion as well and to discuss it with all of you, of course, if you've read this one. So that is everything that I'm currently reading, but this is, <laughs> this is a time of the year where I get particularly overwhelmed by everything I want to read. For so many reasons, it is just such a beautiful time of the year and I know I keep saying this, but it is truly my favorite. It's when I feel the happiest and most inspired and therefore I want to read all the things. <laughs> Problem is I don't have time to read all the things so I need to prioritize a few. Right now what I'll probably read after all of this are two books that I'm reading for the autumnal readathon that I'm currently co-hosting on my Patreon and it has been so wonderful. I need to start filming my vlog for that actually. But anyway, the two books that we are buddy reading together are Wildwood Dancing by Juliette Marillier as our cozy pick and then also The Haunting of Hill House as our spooky pick, which I'm very excited to get to. That's one that has been on my TBR for way too long. <laughs> so yes, those will be my priorities for now, but there's just always so much to do, so much to read, so much to watch, which is a wonderful, overwhelming feeling to have. <laughs> it's in a good way, it's in a good way. I was watching the clip that I filmed previously with my book haul and I sounded very tired, I think. <laughs> Which isn't weird because my sleep schedule was all over the place and it still is a little bit, although I have been sleeping a little better these nights. <laughs> These past couple of days have definitely been more productive, which is good. Um, and yes, I just wanted to spend some cozy time with all of you and give you all these reading updates because I feel like it has been a while since I last spoke about the books I've been reading. Um, but anyway, of course, I would love to hear if you've read any of them. Right now, what I need to go and do is to watch the final episode of The Rings of Power because I'm having a discussion with Lucy and Sarah over on Lucy's channel about it and I'm very nervous <laughs> not only because it is the last one so I'm not sure exactly how they will end the season but also because these last few episodes have not exactly been the best for me I have been a little disappointed overall with this show which is unfortunate there are a couple of characters that I really really care about but as for the rest everything feels a bit underwhelming for me. Of course, it's always a lovely experience to watch it and then discuss it with the girls. I think my favorite episode was like maybe the third one or fourth one, I believe, which is where I think the show picked, kind of. And then after that, it has been kind of <laughs> falling apart a little bit. It is still a fun experience to watch it. Um, two things that are always amazing are the settings. It looks absolutely stunning and also the soundtrack.
the soundtrack is perfection i i adore it i knew i would love it because of the composer so there's that <laughs> so yes that's what i'm gonna do right now and then probably some more work before the live show and start planning a few other videos i have some big videos coming up that do require some more time to get ready so i think i'm gonna work on that as well um i already gave my classes for the day which is nice so i will have a very cozy evening i think a friend of mine is visiting me as well and then tomorrow one of my greatest friends is getting married this is now my third close friend who's getting married and it's always such a wonderful feeling i cannot express to you how incredibly happy i am for her this is amazing <laughs> i also entered a new choir recently i decided to leave the previous one because it really wasn't working for me um, plus my schedule was starting to be not so compatible with it and i didn't think it was worth it so I auditioned for another one and I got in, which is amazing. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully it will go better than the previous one. <laughs> so yes, a lot of things to look forward to and a lot of busy weeks are coming, but hopefully there will also be time to relax and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful time of the year. Um, and I'm excited to share my journey with you all, of course. That's it for this little catch up, but I would love to know how you are, if there's anything you'd like to share, any exciting things happening recently, or just overall how you're feeling. I really hope you're doing very, very well. I also know that the change of seasons can be kind of a hard time for a few people um, when it comes to their mental health. So if that's the case, you're not alone and I'm sending you a big, big hug. I hope you start feeling better soon if that's the case for you. I'm gonna leave you for now and as always I'm sending you all my love, all the hugs and I will see you again very soon on my next video. Bye everyone!